let's get the party started. Over 28,000 registrants have battled their way through our first two qualifier finals. Today, we get set for the third qualifier finals of the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate North America Open 2019. Welcome in, I'm your host, Jordan Ken, alongside Toph, Vicky Kitty, great to see you guys again. Our good friend Nine will be joining us later as well too to close out all of the exciting action in this third qualifier final. As we get set to take a look at what's at stake, we have the final piece of these super teams for each region. We'll have a representative from the Northeast, the Southeast, the Southwest, and the Northwest packing their bags for Pack East here in just a couple of weeks as they get set for some squad strikes. So certainly a lot of excitement there throughout the day and these qualifier finals will be going around from region to region and you'll have two fantastic casters guiding you through all of the action. But Vicky, of course, there are rules to any tournament. And as you look at the matches that we're going to be seeing today, where do we begin with some of the rules? So just like the other online qualifiers that we've been seeing over the last few weeks, um, it, it's, it's gonna be single limb, best of three, items set to low, and it's gonna be a timed seven minute match. And you look at items set on low, and Toph, that's really been the thing that's been interesting when we look at these matches over the last couple of qualifier finals, that you have to factor that into your strategies, not just 1v1 on a flat stage. How does that impact things? Yeah, I think um, there's been a lot of, you know, instances where the make or break uh, has been, you know, control of the items and, like, being able to get to them, and especially given that some of them are really, really high impact, uh, figuring out how to use those uh, has been kind of the deciding factor in some of these. While the items certainly add some flavor, it still comes down to the core fundamentals. And what we're seeing is the players that have those fundamentals are the ones that tend to be the most victorious. Totally. And I mean, you know, to that point, a lot of, uh, a lot of the time the player that's able to get to the items and use them the best, you know, uh, is the player that's knocked the opponent off the stage in the first place without the use of items. So kind of fundamentals and just being able to fight without items usually ends up lending to you being able to control the pace of the items better anyway. And from both of you, we're seeing so much character diversity. We already know it's a huge roster in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, but every single time we've done one of these qualifier finals, it's been a different cast of characters. The net has been really cast very wide. And so, Vicky, start with you. Your thoughts on just all the different play styles and characters we've been seeing. I think it helps display a little bit of the personality of the players themselves because a lot of these characters, sometimes you have to play a lot more patient. A lot of the other characters are a lot more faster, more rushdown type of characters. Um, and just to expand on Toast Point, you know, being able to manage the items and use your character's ability to take advantage of the neutral and the stage, that is very important in determining the winner of the set at the end. And Toph, as Vicky is saying, it's stage control. It's also understanding your opponent, the character they choose, and where you might have the advantage or being aware of your disadvantages in a match. Yeah, we saw that a fair bit last time. Uh, there were a lot of uh, instances where, you know, a player might counterpick a certain character for a specific opponent. And uh, there were some sets where, you know, these players were kind of rotating back and forth with these various characters they would use, uh, you know, kind of strategically, right? So I'm going to I'm going to see if, you know, I'm interested to see if there's any of that today. Both of you have played in tournaments and you figure 28,000 registrants over the couple of weeks that we've done this. It starts to get pretty pressure packed as you make your way and you're trying to get one of those final spots in your region. What's going through the mind of these players as they get set here, Vicky? Because there's a lot at stake, as we said, that trip to PAX East to form that last component of these super teams for squad strike. I mean, the players have made it this far, you know, so it could get a little nerve wracking as you get closer to the finish line. But of course, remaining cool, being confident in what you go for, especially with your item management skills. I think that will be the determining factor for these players a lot of the times of when, whether they feel like like they're confident enough to progress through bracket. I mean, we've actually seen a few players come back from previous weekends, making it just as far as they did in bracket last time to try to go for that crown again. Well, if the last two qualifier finals are any indication, we're in for a terrific show today. Let's get started with the Northeast. EE e. and Coney will be bringing the action from there as we begin our third qualifier finals for the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate North America Open 2019. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate North America Open Online Finals. Once more, this is the final 
uh, time we're going to be doing this, and we are going to get the Northeast region commentated, of course, by myself, Kony, joined by the incomparable, phenomenal EE. We've got four players, the four final players from the Northeast, trying to earn their ticket to PAX East. Yeah, you guys might not believe it, but he did not rehearse that once. Right off the <laughs> top, man, much like a lot of these players who you're going to see, just bring in the action as you see some guy in Eck going to probably open us up, and then Terry and DT. Going to get into it as well, man. Uh, DT Fo, really just an impressive lineup that we have yet again across the board. One thing really standing out to me, we're going to get some Incineroar play yeah, for this buddy. bracket, okay? I know yep. you're as, as two wrestling enthusiasts. Can't wait. Let me tell you something, that's a dream come true. Yeah, it's going to be super exciting. So we've got Incineroar on the table as well as Zelda, Pichu, and Daisy. Those are the four that we're probably going to see because those are the four that these players have been using to sort of progress yep. through the bracket mostly. But did see some Bowser sprinkled in Saw there. Did Bowser see there. Actually, yeah. one, of, one of them actually actually played a little bit of Daisy too. So, you know what yep. I'm saying? They can kind of match match a little bit there. And I'd be interested to see if it actually came down to a ditto. But the main thing I take away from that, Cody, is the fact you got options. Yes, Okay, you got of options. Course. You know, if you go through a seven, eight round grueling bracket to get to this point to the final. Some people actually in some of the regions, we've seen these names before. So that speaks volumes, right, to the dedication and the grind it takes. It's, it's one thing to do it once, to yes. do it twice. Like, you, you're really hungry for that. I, I respect that. Well, it's incredible because, you know, you have to factor in with the items and with the stock play and with everything going on in these tournaments to be able to defeat uh, eight rounds before to get to the Crazy. finals one time. One time, that's an achievement. Twice, that's legendary. And uh, you're going to see some familiar names in some other regions as we go on through the bracket. So you've got the Northeast, the Northwest, Southeast, and the Southwest. I think I got that right. Didn't want to say anything like yeah, North, South. Right you know? like. So you've got uh, 16 players throughout the day. We're going to br be bringing you the Northeast. And uh, you've got another pair that's going to be bringing you the rest of the brackets as we go on through. And the, the major thing that, you know, another big takeaway is we're finally going to have every Everything set in stone as far as who's yes. going to PAX East and how some of those matchups might start to look out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you, you got to imagine, like, you have the winners from every week, you know, finally going to be able to duke it out on one big stage. That's really exciting, right? Yeah. Because you kind of want to, you know, see the takeaway. Who is the best of the best out of everybody who's been able to qualify? And we're going to get those answers very shortly. It's going to be very thrilling to see sort of these players that may not have gone to these large events before getting that opportunity Telling to shine you know. on the big stage. That's what I'm super excited for. At PAX East, you're going to see so many new players so much young blood, hungry talent trying to make their name known. That's one of the reasons I was so excited for this event because I said, oh, online, that means it's accessible to everybody, yes, right? And, and you definitely. can just kind of see those new stars rising and just kind of create those familiar names. So even going down the line, you're like, oh, man, I really recognize that guy. Oh, he won that that online qualifier for Nintendo. Yes. That's kind of a big deal, you know what I'm saying? But the first big deal of the day about to take place, some guy taking on X. Going to see a Pichu versus Zelda encounter on Battlefield. Let's get it on. Saw a little bit of sportsmanship there from Eck with the good luck, have fun at the start of the game. Really like to see stuff like that as some guy starting off with the Pichu with the flower in its hair. Have to see how this goes on Battlefield. Right now, Eck takes a pretty early lead. I was going to say, already accumulating a fair amount of percent, but there's Pichu doing what Pichu does just so well. Any percent, able to just combo and just rack up the damage so well. Truly a, a glass cannon character, I feel like. Oh my goodness, that bomb bomb. Yeah, that was so unfortunate. The pop bomb just coming him right as he started charging the forward smash. Luckily, though, Zelda's forward smash is a multi-hit, so it seemed like she was able to get out of it pretty quickly, as opposed to, you know, one giant hit that Absolutely. would pop off. Oh, okay. So we know what Pichu is really capable of doing. He can really control a lot of space. He's got that good speed, and I love the fact he's got that small frame as well. Can really make it hard to necessarily be a target at times, as you see just the clear cut destruction that first stock being removed very aggressively some guy on some kind of rampage yeah great stuff there but he is going to get the dragoon piece knocked out of him have to keep in mind once the dragoon pieces start spawning mm. they don't stop until somebody assembles it Absolutely. and Eck is going to try to make that happen looks like some guy though using Pichu's sort of oppressive aerials to his advantage gets the second piece of the Dragoon, and now we're going to see a bit of a fight for that uh, dominance over the item. Yeah, and we've seen time and time again through you know, the last two weeks of competition when we've been here, that Dragoon, that, that is a game changer, oh, okay? Yes. It, can either, it can either cause a three-stock fight or it can make a three-stock comeback. There's so many different ways it can go as finally Ek able to remove that stock. Excellent down smash there. Looks like some guy going right for the Dragoon piece. Very wise by him. When you uh, lose your stock and when you get knocked out, basically the Dragoon piece pops out of you. And it's you free have game. to go get it. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Free Open game. for anybody. 
So right now, two stocks each. Both these guys sort of fighting it off that Dragoon piece, sort of flying off the level from Zelda's jab. Kind of surprised by that, but the Smash Ball makes its appearance known. And we saw this in past weeks, where Pichu does have a lot of difficulty breaking that, Finally but that four tilt's ooh, gonna do it. Ooh, and actually at the right time, but the last second dodge going to force the whip oh. of the Volt Tackle. And I can assure you, Cody, that would have been the stock lost for X. No so question. actually catching a little bit of a break. And some guy, I mean, this has been about 70% his match, but some, you know, X just kind of hanging around, being so difficult. A poor choice, though, on that roll, that fourth smash, covering so much ground and going to keep some guy in the lead. And some guy now has two pieces of the Dragoon assembled. And keep in mind, this has been a pretty itemsless match I so far. I was going to say, yeah, man, they haven't been as obtrusive, you know what I'm saying? That's sort of what happens when the Dragoon starts spawning, and I think both these players sort of thankful for that, but mm. it looks like some guy might assemble it pretty shortly. It looks like one of the pieces got knocked out of him, but right now it's just a, a pure one-on-one -on -one between these two. That it is. I noticed Ek has really been leaning on that Phantom Slash from Zelda. Yeah. I've been a little bit of hit, hit or miss thus far, but Ek is really starting to accumulate that kind of damage where you don't want to allow Pichu to be this far in the lead. We know, don't let that small frame deceive you. We already know this boy is capable of just putting on that damage. And now Ek trying to find a way to take off the stock, but it can be difficult with Zelda just because, you know, those forward ar aerial, back aerial, up aerial, those are super hard to hit Facts. on Pichu just because Pichu is such a small target. You saw him get that down smash earlier, but, I mean, I, he's got to land it again somehow. Pichu making it very difficult. Even just a second ago, he went for an up smash, just kind of whiffed, just, I think, just based off the fact that Pichu is just so tiny. He's tried the up air again, and it's just not going to land. Some guy doing an excellent job of staying evasive, keeping this lead on his side. I think he's trying to knock the Dragoon piece out of some guy, but two of them. Uh -oh, Wait, uh -oh. this could be it. Oh, oh no, it fell off the fell stage. by the wayside. You got to die for that, man. All right, this is the Super Bowl, okay? You got to die for that ball, man. You got to jump down and grab it, but he might have another chance here. Oh, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. You the one on the right it. is the deceiving one. Oh, no. The it doesn't matter. He gets them both with the Ford Smash. Excellent sort of sacrifice by some guy. That's something that you see in baseball. He's just like, all right, I'm just going to throw out this Ford Smash, I, throw it down. I feel like he realized the fact that, okay, I don't need to go for the Smash Ball when the, the fake Smash Ball is right here. Right. Because, again, and we've seen that throughout the week. Some people just try and detonate it right there, especially when they have a yes. percent or stock lead because it almost assuredly will guarantee you damage. That close to the left side, oh, yeah, that was an easy decision from some guy. Yeah, and I think he started probably to get a little scared when he saw the Dragoon because that third Dragoon piece showed up, and you could tell that uh, it, it looked like Ek was really going for it, because that could have won in the game. That, that was it, man. That's all it, he had to do. It was right there, but it just, he just saw it fly, fall, and you know, falling with it was his hopes of bringing that game back, man. So, that's rough, man. You gotta, you gotta make those plays, man. He was scared to go off stage with his last stock. I'm not, I'm not blaming him, but I we'll have to it. see how this next I one goes. I get it, but at the same time, I don't. So, <laughs> So you we'll get see. it, but you don't respect I, exactly. it. Exactly. That's, that's, it that's cool, man. That's why we contest these un uh, best of threes. So another opportunity for Ek to get himself on the board here. Some guy, though, what an incredible start, man. This guy is electric. No pun intended, but my goodness, it's right on the screen. Yeah, Pichu just having so good, uh, such good low percent combos can just carry you. They're so potent, taking you all over the stage. You can see Ek trying to deal with that right now as the fire bar is out. It's going to get a bit of damage but before throwing it off to the wayside. Oof. Okay. Like trying to put him on lockdown again, though. Always setting up for that Phantom Slash. I think one of the more powerful tools in the kit of Zelda. Yeah. But you can see some guy not even care about it. Gets the jab lock, a couple of hits, and the four smash gonna finish the job. You gotta watch out for that. Basically, at high level play, if you miss a tech, if the opponent really gets you as you're bouncing on the stage, they can jab you and force you into a situation where they can hit a forward smash and peach you. Just this, so good at capitalizing. Let me tell you something. This is just going so downhill. Dracula right there just coming on, just putting on a ton of damage. Yeah. And Ek already down to his final stock. Some guy looking like the guy to beat early on, but finally that stock getting submitted. However, the whole stock lead right now, Cody? I mean, is it? we've seen it before, okay? But I, I think Dragoon might have been involved in that comeback. I think I think I remember a Dragoon, but it, oh my, he got out of that so fast. That mash, That though. mash was incredible. I, I don't, he jealous. must be playing on three controllers. That's, I don't know what to say. That's the speed of youth right there, man. Ten that years ago, I could have done the same thing. <laughs> So right now, a full stock lead for some guy. I think X is going to have to hope for some sort of, you know, some item to be spawned. But right now, some guy using the back shield and, perfectly. And you see how he just approaches with it, too. Exactly. Yeah. The back shield. And, and Pichu has those aerials to really just kind of utilize the strength of that back shield as well. Still able to attack through, keep himself safe. There's really nothing X can do thus far to penetrate. 
penetrate these defenses. And you can tell some guy not even opting for the final smash. He realizes he doesn't need to go for it. I do like that up B usage by Zelda trying to make it happen. Triforce of Wisdom might come out if he's able to make it land, he, and that should be able to take off the stock. If he knocks this off, it's all but over for Ek. He needs this to connect oh. and just go for it. What? Wait, what? what? Oh my goodness, the charity stock perhaps? I don't really know the what's The magnetism. Up. Can you imagine? I don't know. He just got pulled all the way in. Good stuff by Ek, knowing more about it than we do. But the gust bellows making it very difficult to recover. Some guy just holding it, letting it rip. And Ek oh, air dodging no. off the stage. So unfortunate. But because of that, some guy's going to advance on to grand finals of our bracket. I thought Ek had an opportunity, man. I, I, you know, he, he's able to connect with the, the Triforce of Wisdom. I thought, I thought that might do it. I, couldn't, so I was very surprised at actually how much range Big that pole. has. And when I think about it, though, I've seen that thing drag people from under the stage, too, and connect. So I have it seen actually, that, actually has some pretty nutty range. So for him That's to go true. for it there, good clutch play. But as you said, the Gus Bellows. All right, let's go ahead and light the fires and kick the tires y'all and get set to send you over to the southeast where TK and Senpai will bring you more action in our third qualifier finals here in the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate North America Open 2019. And welcome, guys. It is time for the final, the actual final Southeast region, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate North American Open 2019. We're going to see who is going to round out this uh, list of people that we have going to PAX East as we already have uh, Wrath yeah, and Rath Devante. From our region, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. So popping off. But I'm TK Breezy. Senpai. And we're back yet again. About to get right back into it. It seems like we have uh, some... Four new competitors this time, uh, but uh, kind of an even split that we always have where we have one, three people from one region and one from uh, yeah. the other. So we have uh, one uh, Mexican representative yet again and then three American representatives. And, uh, well, they go as follows. Uh, after we get this here uh, bracket up, we have Gamester5001 versus Poltergust and then Clueless going up against Blue Barrett. Yeah, and we see Clueless, the solo Mexican representation, and I believe the first week, uh, that's the person who won, so we'll see if they can repeat that. Yeah, it, well, yeah, Rath was, I think he was the solo uh, American oh, representation, yeah, the other way and around. then he was like, yeah, let me just uh, go ahead and win <laughs> anyway, so. Uh, but let's see what uh, happens here, is Clueless gonna be able to make it to grand finals, uh, you know, get a chance, he has to go over Blue Bear, and then he has to take over out whoever uh, wins between Gamester, 5001 in Poltergeist, which is actually going to be our first match of the day. Yeah, we see the two of them sitting in the arena right now, and we got to watch them warm up a little bit, but we don't know which characters they're maining on. Right, right, right. I, if I, I remember the name Poltergeist, and I'm not completely sure if this is the guy that uh, that I remember from Brawl Days. Oh, yeah, you are saying. Uh, yeah, that Poltergeist used to play Yoshi. Mm -hmm. So, But when we were watching him warm up, he wasn't playing Yoshi. He was playing a, well, a bunch of other characters, yeah, actually. Yeah, I so. think they were doing some like just random hand warmers. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're going to see uh, who he ends up playing very soon. And then Gamester5001, again, uh, another name I'm not super familiar with, so it's nice to see some unfamiliar faces here uh, to see yeah. what they bring to the table. Absolutely. It's really good to see people coming out for these Nintendo events to mm -hmm. get into uh, the competitive nature of Smash Brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know, uh, again, if, you're, if this is your first time watching, this is an items tournament, but the items are on low. There's uh, Smash Balls uh, as well, but no Smash Meter, oh, yeah. so you do have to uh, actually break the Smash Ball. Uh, the fake and the real one are on, plus they like every other item in the game. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> And uh, the stages that we pick are random. So, I mean, not, not like super random, uh, but there's no counterpicking or anything like that. We just, mm. you know, get into it. You might get Battlefield. You might get Congo Jungle, something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So, oh, looks like we're getting to it. And it is Poltergust, the Yoshi. So, if that is the actual legend, shout out to the legend for still playing. And he will be going up against Gamester's Lucas. All right, let's see if he has any advantage here. Coming from Brawl, he's clearly been playing Smash Bros. for a really long time. See Time to go do. all out. Yeah, exactly. I like the taunt message coming in hot. But I, I wish, I wish, I feel like I should have uh, recognized. So, Gamester's uh, actual like icon, off, uh, like uh, in the regular screen, is the icon that's on Lucas's shirt. So I should have been able to guess. But oh, okay. I don't play. I don't play Earthbound. <laughs> so. Well, there yeah. you go. Right now, it looks like Yoshi plays Earthbound, working this Lucas across the stage, keeping him kind of trapped here on the ledge. Ooh, okay, we got the, uh, well, I got the, I got the, the wind bellows, yeah. the gust bellows. So let's see what he does with this. Uh, uh, yeah, as long as Gamester stays from directly in front of Yoshi, he should be fine. But if that man has to recover, his up B can get gimped very easily by that gust. Yeah, that looks like that's what Polt trying to do. It's like, let me just push him off stage. Yeah. But it didn't seem to work out uh, just yet. The PK Thunder is going to go ahead and get him right across. We got the first smash ball. Oh, okay. Oof. Trying to do mad damage to it right there with that. Okay, there it is. Gets it. See what Yoshi's going to uh, do with this final smash, though. Yes, yeah, so the first time seeing people actually trying to actively get the smash ball, man. Yeah. Uh-oh. 
Yoshi not even using it now. He just wants to take the stock and hang on to the Smash Ball to use for the second stock. Very smart. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. So that up air definitely would have finished off uh, that stock there. But regardless, yeah, as you said, man, he's trying to keep this uh, this this Smash Ball in on deck for the next stock. And he's already got him at 119, so he could get the KO here. But why not just try to get it with a Smash? Oh, okay. Okay. He never said never mind. mind. Yeah, there I was Pokeballs it. everywhere. He didn't want to have to interact with that. The Stampede coming in. Rest in peace, Lucas. Going to go out. It looks so rude every time. Yeah, it does. And Goldeen is the only Pokemon. Oh wait, we got uh, Gardevoir as well. Yeah. So he won't be able to throw any eggs as long as uh, Gardevoir is around. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gardevoir, that Gardevoir just reflects projectiles. Right. So, uh, yeah, so if he ends up throwing like an egg inside of Gardevoir, he'll immediately get hit. But if he throws one out, it's just, oh, Ooh. okay. Good mash. <laughs> yeah, I can't barely, believe you made that out. Barely getting out of that at the last second before going into the blast zone. Yeah, I was like, that is that is a super hard thing to mash out of now. Okay. Ooh, and I like the slant combo. You actually probably wouldn't have been able to connect that on a flat stage, but yeah. picking that up there. Okay. Good stuff. Oh, super, uh -oh. super Yoshi. <laughs> Omega <laughs> Yoshi. Definitely going to need to watch out here, covering so much stage. Oh man, that Nair almost doing it. Oh, okay, loses loses the uh, oh, oh I say loses the size just in time. Uh, I feel like another hit, regardless of what he was gonna hit him with, would have definitely finished him off. Surprised he didn't die to that Nair. Right. And oh. right here, still hanging on to that first stock, just barely. Oh, we got oh. assist trophy coming in. Oh, okay, Great that's Fox, it. right? Yep, yep. Yeah. Great Fox can go ahead and chop him up. I thought Polk was Polk, like he tried to get a little combo in there too, just uh -huh. sneaking in the up air, but wasn't able to do it. So, yeah, but Great Fox still out here living. Yeah, and still on his first stock, Lucas gonna. Oh my goodness, already at 69% off of that Gray Fox combo. Yeah, that, that's super damage right there. So, oh, oh. maybe, okay. Okay, I, so Gray Fox finally is like, you know what, I, th I think I've done enough. Pulse still on all three stocks, too, so this is a super huge comeback that needs to be made here. Oh, I like that I like idea. That, yeah. There we go. He's gonna wait it yeah. out, get it the second time. Good stuff by Gamester to get that first stock, finally. Yeah, Pulse kind of just threw that one away. I think he could have at least tried a Yoshi Bomb. Uh, mm -hmm. down. Yeah, yeah, because like you, you can't get out of it with regular momentum, but if you have a move that has momentum like that, it, it will at least let you hit the ground. So right, all right. If Gamestar can maybe get that Smash Ball, possibly make a tiny comeback here. Yeah, that Smash Ball is like, nah, not you. Yeah, it's very not evasive. You. He's like, oh. okay, I like the down air connection, and he's gonna go right into it. Okay, Colt's just gonna try to. Okay, ran right back into. It. I was gonna try, try to edge out Jukes. We out. Yeah, he kind of <laughs> he avoided m most, most of, of it. That, yeah. yeah. Oh, the PK freeze. Oh, jump armor. Yoshi's double jump does have that armor on it, so he can take the hit, but it won't take any knockback. Yeah, I actually wasn't sure that was going to work with the, the freeze properties, but it definitely did come Ooh. straight up. Oh, but not at not near the ledge. If he would have went straight up to the ledge, should have been able to grab it, but unfortunately, yeah. under the stage, didn't go through it. Yoshi's going to take that first game. Yeah, you can tell that he was trying to get up through the stage itself instead of uh, trying to contest for the ledge with Yoshi standing by it, but unfortunately not going to reach. Yeah. Yeah, so good first game. Uh, mm -hmm. Polt definitely looking about as uh, Yoshi as I remember him. Uh, this is like a really weird Yoshi pose. I've never seen. I was about to say yeah. I like that Yoshi pose. He's kind of killing it. Go ahead, Yoshi. So we got Yoshi. Uh, Yoshi <laughs> Lucas is our first game. That was um, Polt actually taking that pretty pretty handily. But let's see mm. what games we can do in the second game as we get right back into the action. Seems like these guys were not going to waste any time. Yeah, no very smart. No character switches. Nothing, none, of, none of that stuff. We're going to get right back into the action as you see. Yeah. Um, Yoshi versus Luke is happening a second time. Sometimes you do need to take a minute to think about the game and see what you did wrong, but I think Yoshi just wants to hold on to whatever mo momentum he has and get right back into it. Yeah, Gamester got some words, man. She said, you can't stop me this time. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't, it wasn't necessarily true last time, but let's see what happens this time. Yeah, we'll see, man. Yeah, that was a different, that was a different message, so I, I'm with this message. This one has a little more uh, a little more oomph on it. Mm -hmm. All right, so even, uh, even uh, percentages right now, not looking too bad? Yeah. Quick combo, though. Going to go right into Poltergust's favor and trying to get the spike to end it quick. All right. So it gets away from that as well. Oh, okay. Assist trophy on deck. Uh, probably not the assist trophy that he wanted, though. Yeah, we're not going to be able to see anything for a quick second. Just a bunch of sounds happening here. Right. This is one of those assist trophies that doesn't really help you or your opponent in any way. <laughs> kind of helps Lucas in. Yeah. Get it. Yeah, he's got the, he's got the, the lamp on now. <laughs> They're still scrapping, too. I don't even know like where they're at. I would fight, too, man. Just swing. Just throw those attacks out. Oh, man. Just a bunch of dust clouds and PK fires being shown <laughs> right there. But regardless, uh, back into the match, we, we got uh, some illumination here so we can actually see what's going on. Right. Uh, All right. Landing with that Nair. Going to get the reverse hitbox on it and trap him on the ledge here. But the grab, very smart from Gamester, taking over the stage control here. Oh, Juice. <laughs> yeah. Protecting himself at the last second there, knocking him away from Yoshi. Yeah, definitely thought he was going to try to go up at first. Another uh, Smash Ball in here. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, get a hit on Lucas and take the Smash Ball right into a back air, and he can hold on to that Smash Ball for stock two. Yeah, that's the good thing about uh, Yoshi. That aerial drift, man, it's such great aerial momentum. He's able to follow you like pretty much anywhere you uh, end up going. Right. All right. If so. he can line this up, man, that's going to take the stock. Like, Ooh. 
Oh, the combo into it. I think he's gone. Absolutely. Off the left side right there. The Stampede coming in hot. He's gone. Oh, what a combo. Jab, jab into, into his final smash. Okay. You got those. True. You got those pulls. True combo. <laughs> Definitely a true combo. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, as Gamester said, he can't be stopped, Ooh. but you really can't stop a, a Yoshi for, uh, Stampede either, so. Yeah, that is 100% true, but that forward smash going to take the stock off. It's kind of looking like the same position he was in the last game. Going to need to do something crazy to make the comeback. Yeah. So, oh, one more piece. Pult actually ends up picking it up himself, so. Yeah, lucky for him, not allowing Lucas to get the last piece. Oh, actually, I think he kicked that out of him. So he's <laughs> oh. holding he's holding uh, two pe separate pieces or something else. Oh, okay, you're right. Yeah, yeah. So it looked like he, he got that one jab to actually kick that piece out on Lucas with the uh, Butterfingers. Both of them with Butterfingers. Every hit just knocking out another piece. Right, and he has three pieces now, but not connected or not all the right ones. Uh -oh. Or no, is it two? No, no, here, that's the third piece. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and like, these guys are really just <laughs> dropping these pieces every time they get hit. Oh, and it fell off the stage this time. Nobody can have that. Ooh, up here. Gamester looking really rough right now and needs to get back on the stage carefully. Oh, gosh, he went so low again. Yeah, luckily for him, though, with not being able to go through the stage, he will just ride it if he has to yeah. the side. So. Man, yeah, these neutral airs are just getting blown up. Pol Pol uh, Poltergeist with these full hop forward airs. Just getting straight over it. Oh, knocks that piece out, too. It's like, Ooh. let me have that before you leave. Yeah, exactly. Send a message with him. All right, okay. so that will be his set. Yeah, so I think the thing that thing that we thought was the third piece is actually just the rope snake looping back around. Okay, yeah, that's just It was just like in the snake. perfect position to look like a third piece. It did, so. yeah. I yeah. was like, mm. yeah. yeah. Okay, so Poltergeist gonna take that with his patented Yoshi pose that we've never seen. Yeah, I like that. Dude, I feel like this is the first. Yeah, I don't get to see a lot of Yoshi wins, I guess. So this is yeah, like the I guess first that's time what it is. that I've seen that Yoshi pose. So yeah, Poltergeist will be moving on uh, into a grand final. So we're just gonna wait and see what happens right. on the other side of the of this here uh, this here bracket to see who he ends up playing. But good Yoshi play. I mean, I just. You know, as I said, that, that man's been playing Yoshi since Brawl. That's the same Portuguese that I'm believing. It must be, And yeah. it must be, yeah, because he's still playing. Uh... Great stuff from TK and Senpai as you saw Poltergust move on. No issues whatsoever as Yoshi. Let's go ahead and head out to the southwest where Webs and D1 will be bringing us the action between Nobo and Terror Bear. So let's go ahead and check things out as we get ready to roll. All right, so checking it out over here, we have Nobu versus Terror Bear in round one, and on the other side, a salad bar versus Zekrom. Now, what makes me really excited is because one of the players here I actually recognize, he used to be an old roommate of mine in Terror Bear. I already know he has a lot of skills. Um, going into Smash Brothers, been playing Smash Brothers for quite some time competitively. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be really interesting to see how he stacks up against the rest of the guys here, trying to see if they can qualify for the finals at PAX East. So we've got Nobu. Who's going to be playing, I believe, Mega Man, uh, uh, interestingly enough. So Nobu's going to be rocking the Mega Man, yes. where Tear Bear has a plethora of characters, but we do know him for his Ike. His Ike has gotten him rather far here uh, uh, at the North American Open and a salad bar. He also plays Ike as well. You know, Ike has a, is a character who actually started getting more popularity, I'd say, around the beginning of February. Um, you know, there was a player in the Smash Brothers community who has found great success with said character. Actually, not even early February, um, early January. Yeah, early January. Mm. So early, ever since early January, a lot of people started hitting up quick play and not even just a quick play, but even Elite Smash. And you just notice random mics would start swinging. You know, they'd use that neutral air, covers a decent amount of range, and it, oh, you're able to convert off of it so well. And against a salad bar, by the way, we have Zekrom with the Sonic. But here it is right now, guys. No time wasted. Nobu versus Tear Bear starting off on Yoshi's Island. So we're going to see how that Ike with that Nair coming in, like you talked about, is going to deal with this projectile-based Mega Man. As he is able to get in real early, you can see him start to build up a little bit of damage, push the Mega Man off stage. Yeah, what I really love about the way that Tear Bear is approaching this matchup is the fact that he's not giving Mega Man any room for him to set up. He got both of his jumps right there a little bit too early on the jump, and Nobu's gonna take heavy damage for that one already right now at 76, and Tear Bear's still at a comfortable 7. Yeah, he's done an excellent job holding the center stage right now, just keeps pushing the Mega Man off. Ooh, nice outspacing with that back air. Yeah, allowing him to at least get a little bit of damage and try to get back on stage as well. Here it is again. Back air has been working out pretty well for him. It's a pretty good tool to use to end combos and so, and also KO the opponent at high percent. And we do have the first Smash Ball in play. 
See if Nobu, oh, he does get a shot in on it. I feel like the way Tabret's playing, it's like he doesn't even, he's not even allowing Nobu to go for it. I, the, since he's not even chasing after the Smash Ball, it kind of leads me to believe. Oh, oh whoa, he did manage to snipe it, though. Okay, well. Let's see if he's able to land it. And oh, Mega Man Legends, he wasn't able to actually avoid it. And there it is, the super fighting robot already coming through Mega Man. And is that a KO? Wow! Air Bear started off strong, but Nobu with the excellent snipe on the Smash Ball to take that first stock. I didn't think it was going to happen, man, but it actually did. Yeah. Tamper, yeah, it looked like he tried to like avoid it. I didn't see an air dodge from him, though. Yeah, he I either jumped or air dodged backwards, but uh, just couldn't get away from the black hole, and that's all she wrote. That's it. Okay, double jump gone, but good drift back right there by Nobu. He's trying to keep this lead. That, that Smash Ball actually allowed him to get that lead, you know? He was having a bit of a tough time facing off against Tear Bear. Now, Tear Bear, you can see the way he's playing. He, he He's fundamentally sound, but Nobu, the fact that he was able to just use the items to his advantage, you know, that that's a whole new element that players have to get used to when they're playing. That's right. They add such a, a big uh, diversity to the play. Uh, it's yeah. not just about, you know, stage control, but it's also about, you know, getting those items, being able to effectively utilize them. Oh, he oh my gosh! Track, dude, I didn't know he had the other two pieces! Where's the air dodge? Oh, he didn't catch him after the air dodge. Oh my! Did wow. he get him? Wow! Wow! He that's... was so patient on that dragoon. <laughs> you know, th here's the reason why Tear Bear was waiting. A lot of times, players go for obvious spot dodges and air dodges whenever you see the dragoon. Right. So, Tear Bear was trying to seek that out, and then the moment he realized, you know what? I feel like he exa he exhausted a lot of his defensive mechanisms. I'm probably gonna go for it right here, right now, and he managed to land it. KOing Nobu at such a low percent too. Tear Bear still had a pretty high percent himself. Okay. But he is slowly building a little percentage, just trying to get oh. that lead. Wow, great coverage by Nobu. Yeah, you're going to have to watch out, man, because Mega Man, he, he actually is able to cover a, a decent amount of horizontal distance, right? Yeah. With, it, with a lot of his tools, especially that forward smash, as you saw, taking that stock right there, bringing these guys down to their final stock each. But, oh, okay. Oh, he got knocked off right away. He had the smash ball for a moment. Tear Bear has to make sure that Nobu doesn't get this, or Nobu. Might be the champion, but here it is, Tear Bear. <gasps> Scary situation here. He's recovering. Oh, I like what he's doing. He's just, oh, I think that's going to combo straight into it. What an absolute beautiful bait by Tear Bear. Gets the great ether, and we have the finish. Tear Bear taking the first game. He played so well with that. He knew that the threat of having the Smash Ball allowed him to just sit and heal for as much as he could. It forces the Mega Man to approach him because otherwise he's just going to go right back down to 0%, and then he lands the Aether perfectly. That was so good. Yeah. The, the fact that he was even able to realize, you know, that AoE, I'm going to stay right here. You're going to have to come to me, right? Yeah. Hey, that was, that was impressive right there by Tear Bear, taking the first game right here over Nobu with the Mega Man. I'm not, I don't think we're going to see a switch here. Nobu's Mega Man has gone quite far here in this bracket, and Tear Bear's Ike as well. I mean, just won the first game, so I don't think he's going to be switching either. What I really liked from that game was how both players were very smart with their item usage. Neither of them went committed too hard to try to go pick up items, and they were both really patient and used them in super smart ways. You can see how the experience, you know, playing through this tournament has really helped them to uh, figure out the best way to implement those and different items. Abilities. All right, let's get it. Here it is again. Tear Bear, you notice how he's trying to use like different jump heights to even get through the pellets of Mega Man. Finds his way inside, but the high side platforms of this particular stage make it easy for you to relieve the pressure. First Leaf Shield we see coming out of uh, Nobu right there, too. He's able to combo into it, build up a little bit of percentage. A couple of nice forward airs afterwards as well. Yeah, we got the Fire Rod as well coming out here. Has decent range. Okay, and look at that. Look at that. It's actually a pretty decent tool, and it looks like Tabret could also use that to toss upwards if he notices. See, just like I mentioned, yeah. uh, Clairvoyant right here, just, <laughs> just waiting to see what these players do. And I like this. This actually increases the burst range that Tabret has, having that item in hand. Whoa! Okay, that's a scary thing to deal with. Mega Man being a, such a heavy character, you don't want to have a, an opponent that's going to knock you up high in the air and be able to immediately follow up with that bunny hood. Because that will result in a uh, loss of a stock pretty early. Okay. Uh, Terror Bear so far had been controlling the stage for most of the time, but now Nobu at center doing a pretty good job. And we do have another Smash Ball on the field. That's right. We did see Nobu get the Smash Ball first in the last game. Now, one thing about this stage is that since it goes up so much higher with the side platforms and the yep. middle plats, that it's a little bit more difficult to get up there and get the Smash Ball. Ooh, good patience from Nobu, avoiding that. Yeah, that was actually really smart. A lot of times players just... They tunnel vision whenever they see Ike start charging right there, but you could already see that Nobu, it's not his first time dealing with a move like Eruption. 
Okay, beautiful pair right there, but it wasn't really able to get anything of it. Here it is again with the Leaf Shield. Yeah, Nobu's doing a much better job with that Leaf Shield. Just creating a little bit of space, trying to get the Ike out of his immediate range. You know, Mega Man, a ranged base character, so he doesn't want to have that Swordsman all the way up inside him. But wow, I can't believe that up air actually KO'd. So smart right there. So what Nobu basically did was when he used that Leaf Shield, because of the fact that it knocks you up in the air, you could wait to follow where your opponent goes afterwards. And Terber, he double jumped not only once, but many times after getting hit by the Leaf Shield. And Nobu was able to retain that and got the up air. So very smart on his part to get that KO. Now, both of these guys are already at two stocks apiece seeing how Terber was able to quickly get that stock right after he lost his. Yeah, right off of the respawn platform. You, that you always got to watch out for that. And you know, one of the things I like about this game is that if you're on the respawn platform and you hang out there for too long, you actually don't have a lot of invincibility when yeah, you get off. That's true, you got to come down quickly. Yup. Can't just be stalling up there. Oh, another great leaf shield. Nice, okay. Tabor at this time delaying the jump to get back on, but look how hard it is for him to take center stage. Good stuff right here by Nobu. Oh. Bomb. Oh. Ah, that's a lot of damage. 55 now on Nobu just after that bomb. Yeah, and it's insane. Like 25 plus. Mm -hmm. So much knockback on that. And you saw Tabor try to cross up with the roll, but that fair still caught. Double jump. Nope. Tabor is mixing it up, but. Catches him again with the up air. Whew, 126%. Gotta watch out. Okay, goes for the eruption, but uh, <laughs> wrong way, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like Tabor was probably looking for a spot dodge. We have a fake and a real smash ball. Yeah, that fake one is lower. The real one's up on high. Uh oh, let's hope the players didn't hear us there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> All right. Wouldn't that be funny if they were tuned into the stream? Right? <laughs> that would be so grimy. Here it is. Okay, Terror Bear. Ooh, I think he was thinking about going after it, but it flew off the stage. Wow, runs right up into the grab, and that back, through so back, back throw so strong for Mega Man. Mm -hmm. the amazing knockback growth for that. And here is Didine out on the stage, but not so much range. You see Tear Bear respecting it, hanging out on the platform, which gave Nobu the opportunity to pressure from beneath with the up airs. Yeah, he controlled so much space with that Pokemon. He's so smart, just getting under with the up airs, not committing to too much. All right, hanging back in center is Tear Bear right now. Uh oh, we have... It's a remote mine. Yes, we do. Gotta watch out for that proximity mine. No KO again. Mega Man, he's a heavy boy. Is he coming back? Eruption! Oh, the fear. Not quite going to be enough. Yeah, that's scary when you've got that charged, strong smash attack. Ooh, he just jumps down and detonates the remote mine. Such a he smart. He says, I don't want that here. Exactly. He said, you know, I got that invulnerability. Let me go in there and make sure to get rid of that threat before I forget about it. Okay, party time. What are we going to get? Let's see. A bunch of bombs or not? All right, so uh, we have ooh, an assist Oh, trophy. man, this is a powerful one. Wait, Dr. Wily? I'm not sure if Dr. Wily is going to be able to come through with the assistance. Let's see. Okay, nice. Actually, this oh, is... Oh, no, this for is Nobu. A, yeah, this is a tough situation. This is Mega... Mega Man has to deal with Dr. Wily. How will... How oh, will another Nobu? assist trophy, too? Oh, no. The combo? Ashley's out here. We don't get to hear her song, unfortunately. Nobu's doing a pretty good job avoiding all this so far. Oh, Okay. Too much damage. He's able to go up above Ashley once again. Oh. But the up air catches him. And what? that is a 2 0 for Tear Bear. Tear Bear using the assistance of Dr. Wily to get the best of Mega Man and advancing in the Southwest. Let's go ahead and check in on the Northwest. Action already in play. DC and Vish will go ahead and bring you Austin versus Whopper. Austin up 1 0 over Whopper at this moment. Man, so many. He, he got the huge shield break. He got the huge side Bs, which led the KOs. And man. Yeah, and you know, I want to say, I want to say, it looked like he was having the most success with Charizard there. So I wonder if we're gonna see him maybe try to uh, get Squirtle out of there. So we didn't see Squirtle put that much work. I think Ivysaur was uh, doing some work, but Charizard yeah. was definitely helping him out the most there. So I would love to see him maybe try to get to Charizard as soon as possible. Yeah, the the weight of Charizard was helping him stay alive just a little bit longer. Squirtle was getting KO'd right off the bat. Okay, let's see. Okay, goes right oh, into the you're all upbeat. washed up, and that is all. I think that's your favorite item right there, Vish. Oh, it's a fake smash ball, <laughs> and you can see neither of them are going for it. They know. Oh, they know, man. So now it's just a detriment to the stage. Got to be careful where you throw out your attacks, because yeah. I, I believe it has a lot less HP than a normal smash ball, so only a few attacks will make it explode. Oh, oh it's going in, dude. <laughs> it's just rushed right into Dunk and Comic. <laughs> it wants to fight too, man. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> this is trainer. Squirtle, Even no, Pokemon no, no, no. trainer knew. He knew, man. I'm not getting the match today. Squirtle's done. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, Squirtle, get out of there. 
<laughs> everything, I love how everything got silent during that part. <laughs> yeah. The only Pokemon trainer was hurt. All right, Ivysaur's turn now. Let's see if uh, he can make up for some of this lost uh, Squirtle stock here. Yeah, I, I feel like the, the zoning potential of Ivysaur could work out well. At least he could gain some footing against this Donkey Kong because he needs some momentum on his side right now. Got a little, little work with that, that War Club. He's going to throw it right off the stage, though. He doesn't even want to deal with it, man. It's, it takes a while to swing it. Yeah. What does DK have? Is that a Super Scope? A super Scope you got him, man. Yep. Yeah. Throws it right down so he can safely get back to stage. But again, he's just got a solid lead. 89%. Look at the way he dashes towards the, yep. the Smash Ball and then came back. It's a really solid bait to use the items like that. Yeah, that is a seasoned player here. Using the items, not even as the items, but as sometimes as bait. You know, sometimes right. you just confuse your opponent by making it seem like you're going to go for it and turn around and hit him with a Smash Attack. Yeah. Oh, it's still there. Yeah, it's it was... still there, man. It was chilling on the stage for a little bit. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, uh oh. Oh, goes all the way off. Delivery! Oh. USPS, baby. Oh, okay. All right. Donkey Kong. And uh, again, man, Austin looking so strong here in this game number two. I thought this was really going to be a turn for Whopper, but I don't know. He has a lot of uh, a lot of ground to make up here. Back throw is not going to do it. Oh, not quite. Oh, nice. Okay, shield still a banana. <laughs> I thought he was going to get clocked by it, man. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Oh, man, he's stuck in the corner. Nice. Gets out of there. Oh, he's metal. Okay, so this, this is the way to turn the ties a little bit. He's not going to be sent anywhere, which can be a good thing and a bad thing, you know? Yeah, he could get, like, comboed a lot, or you could eat a lot of percent at low, uh, low damage. Yeah, I'd love to see him go in here. I think, uh, maybe, like, a, I don't know. DK is pretty heavy. I don't think an up throw will do it. No, not pretty close. Yeah. Assist trophy. Will right. this help? Okay. All right, the burrowing Snagrit. Yep. Okay, that time it'll feel... But the, this, this particular assist trophy stays for so long. Yeah, he's, uh... He's kind of a troll too, man. He's, he can go wherever he wants. You see him digging out from underneath that platform that has nothing underneath it. That's right. even, that not even <laughs> logical, man. How, how does that make sense? <laughs> Where is he coming from? Wait, he's he's going to be here for a while, and he is really messing up a lot of Austin's like combos. Yeah, all right. So he got some good damage off that burrowing snack right there, but he's going to have to land another KO. And you see, like, historically, it seems like he's had a really hard time dealing with that. Uh-oh. Okay, he goes off stage. Doesn't get the no back jumps hit. left, dude. He's gonna have to. Oh, oh no! Man. Oh no! Whopper. That'll be it. Austin takes it 2-0. 2-0 over, over Whopper. So the underdog couldn't quite do it against quite. an experienced man yeah. like Austin, yeah. who again has been here before mm -hmm. and is working towards a pack. Once again, making it to grand finals and his second appearance here in the uh, qualifier finals. Yeah, you know, I don't quite remember if he made it past round one or the last weekend we did this. I think he lost uh, round one, so he's made it already further. Than he's he beaten his before. record. Yeah, yeah, he's doing better, better than he did last time. So that's great, man. Making the grand finals. And I don't know, who do you think he's going to see there in grand finals? We got Tipster and Marks. So based on what we've seen before, Tipster uh, made it to grand finals last time, losing to a Ridley player, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And then Marks also lost in round one. So... Again, Tipster and Mark's no stranger, but Tipster's going a little bit further. He might have just a tiny bit more of the tournament experience here. But who knows, man? Maybe, who knows? Maybe Mark's took that weekend off to get some practice in with his new main. That's right. He was Mewtwo, and now he's Me Gunner. So it could be a whole different story. You know, he had uh, how long has it been? It's been like four weeks since it's then. Been a while. It's so been a while. He's, uh, it's a lot of practice you can get. And obviously, he's made it back here in this uh, this finals weekend. So he's got something up his sleeve there with Me Gunner. I'm really curious to see what kind of work he puts in against uh, Mega Man. It's gonna be. A lot of zoning from both uh, both these characters, oh, yeah. right? Like both of them like to stay from the opposite side of stage for the most part before they go in. You got the blaster from from Mega Man. You got the whole kit from from Me Gunner. It's yeah. called Me Gunner. There's a lot of uh, I got a lot of options there with Me Gunner in terms mm -hmm. of uh, in terms of projectiles. Mega Man does have quite a few, so I think we're gonna see like maybe a slower paced zoning game, like right. you mentioned. Uh, I don't know. It really it really depends on how the characters decide to play. I think I don't quite remember, but I feel like Tipster was a little bit aggressive for a Mega Man player. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe so. He definitely had some plays, especially against that uh, the the Ridley player. That was a really exciting set from yep. last week. But so, uh, I'm very very excited to see. Uh, but uh, I don't I don't know, man. It, it could still it could still go either way. Of course, yeah. they both got blasters on their hands here. So who? I mean, we definitely can't call it before it happens. You yeah, know? yeah. Of course not. Of course not. I think it's gonna be because of how strong they are as zoners. I think it's gonna come down to who can keep the portions of stage that they need to, depending on the item, right? Mm -hmm. Like if they can zone around certain items, like if there's a smash ball, for instance, they zone around that. That could be very strong. They could take control of more stage than their opponent. Yep. So I think that is gonna be very pivotal. And there's gonna be like. 
if, if an item falls on your side of the stage, then suddenly you have an advantage, right? Oh, yeah. So, so I think there's going to be a lot of that kind of play. And honestly, who knows, Vish? We might even be getting hit with the mix-up again. Uh, Marks could <laughs> <That's> he could have right. <laughs> used me, Gunner, just to make it the finals and run right back to Mewtwo. He's like, I know Tipster's going to go Mega Man. Yep. I'm going to go someone that can go in instead. Yeah, you, you never know. We uh, Both of them can switch characters. I, I mean, it's happened to us before. You know, we've spent a lot of time talking about these characters. <laughs> it doesn't even somewhere. matter in the end. But uh, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm very excited, and I would love to take a look at the bracket so far and see, uh, see where we are. Like I said, Austin making it all the way to Grand Final. Thank you, DC and Vish. And so, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0. Not a whole lot of drama in that first set of matches here. But, Toph, you were really pointing out the fact that a lot of these players were finding ways to combo into the Smash Ball. Oh, yeah. We actually hadn't really seen a whole lot of that in previous weeks. Uh, but we saw with, I think, Poltergust using the jab combo and immediately just going to the final Smash. And also, Terror Bear doing that same thing with Ike's neutral air in the air which is a, a move that's known to combo in a lot of Ike's other aerials. But he comboed into the final Smash, which obviously is probably the best thing you could ask for, right? <laughs> You're just going to end their stock right there. And those Smash attacks and Smash Balls can obviously play a huge role. But, Vicky, we saw the assist trophies really come up. And for these players, it wasn't like the assist trophy was just doing the damage. It helped with the stage controls. Yeah, well. we actually saw it with Tierber when around the end he was down a stock. And at the very end when he got those two assist trophies, it really helped keep his opponent in the air. And at that point, Ike has such a strong up air that when he uses that upwards aerial, that could really be the game changer since it takes you so far up into the ceiling. Early on, we saw some guy use Pichu. And you look at Pichu mm. and basically can get tossed around like a helium balloon, but so small. And so it's really interesting when you have a character like that, how you have to play with Pichu. Yeah, no, Pichu is a character that, I mean, obviously is a lot of strengths, but one of the most subtle is the fact that just by being so small, mm. a lot of your moves are just going to whiff. Some characters, you know, they want to... If you want to use like a short hop aerial, like you jump and you uh, maybe out of shield or something like that, um, a lot of the times Peach is so low to the ground, just standing there that it'll that it'll just miss. And with Zelda Vicky, a character where you have to be very accurate with a lot of her attacks. If you really want to specialize with her, you're trying to hit this teeny tiny tiny little Pokemon right there, and that's one of those cases where. Sometimes matchups play a huge role in who might have the advantage going into a battle. Yeah, as Tove actually mentioned, you could see a lot of times that Zelda's aerials would whiff above uh, Pichu, and because since Pichu's so low, he was able to low profile around a lot of it. But also with Zelda, when you recover with her, a lot of the times we could see like aggressive recovery back onto the stage, and if you don't ledge cancel it, it could leave you into like a really vulnerable situation. And you were really raving about Poltergust and yeah. Yoshi, and what is it about Yoshi that really stands out to you? Because a little bit more atypical than some of the the other characters with not really having that third true jump or up B at the end. What is it about Yoshi and Poltergust that made them such a formidable combination? So that heavy armor actually could do a lot of good things for Yoshi, especially when there's assist trophies at play. You could use that heavy armor on the second jump to get out of a lot of situations, like the black hole item. Um, when you use that jump, it could actually put you out of a lot of tricky situations. But also the egg bounce. The egg bounce on some of these stages, like Congo Jungle, it could really help cover a lot of space for you on the stage. And it's so true, Toph, because sometimes these stages can play a huge role in how characters might do. And we saw with a larger character in Austin and Donkey Kong in Pokemon Stadium 2 that mm. the stage didn't really play much of a role. And you have a large character that's able to do well in an items match. Yeah, no, Donkey Kong, I mean, one thing you're always going to have with Donkey Kong is just raw power, right? And I think that, like, just being able to survive hits for longer as well. Um, I mean, we saw, like, the Charizard up throw, which is, like, a really solid, uh, you know, KO move against most of the cast, is, uh, was, was not uh, taking the stock at, like, 150%. Mm. Which is like, yeah, very rare, obviously. So, a lot of character to move around right there for sure. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll have more from the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate North America Open 2019, our third qualifier finals. We almost have our seats filled for PAX East. <laughs> 